Uh, very good afternoon. The part two of this stats to econometric series. Welcome again, all the participants. Two new participants are joining this time. One is Nikita Soni from IT Rootkey, and Sadik Sir, he's from GNU. Actually, he registered for the part one also, but maybe due to some problems, he was not able to attend the classes. So, welcome both the new participants, and I think uh, from tomorrow onward, <coughs> Lavanya is also going to continue in the part two. So, uh, next thing after the descriptive statistics, so far we covered descriptive stats with inference statistics, hypothesis statistics. So, uh, so far we are trying to describe the variables with statistical measures. Now next is association part. Like how we find the association among the variables and what conclusions they will provide us regarding the association parts. So first, uh, in this particular series, first uh, two, three classes I want to take on correlation, then regression, and next week, most probably, uh, I'll take four classes on <clears throat> time series analysis. This is a basic time series analysis where the time is only the variable. So we're going to uh, methods of the correlation, statistical methods. Today, I want to uh, introduce with the correlation, the reason behind why we study correlation techniques and what are the problems we face and how important is this particular simple tool in statistics for which uh, many, I found many researchers want to give attention more than the just uh, calculation part. So uh, let's start it. Okay, so uh, my first question is, with correlation, what comes in your mind? Means when, it, uh, when it's about the correlation, what first thing you think about the correlation that, what is it? And what first thing come in your mind that is it some correlation diagram association or what? If you can answer. Anyone can try. Okay, uh, Pallavi Singh Association, Nimisha Singh, uh, Degree of Association, okay. Today, again, I think we are only 10 or 11. That's what uh, last time I was trying to say. I don't know why 50% uh, of our participants are not attending the classes. Maybe one or two have some few urgent things, but it's not a uh, coincident that Every day, 50% have some important things to do. Miss, uh, if you participate, then uh, I'll get more queries Then I have to figure out many things. That's the way we learn new things. Okay, how two variables are related. It is related to the direction of the relationship, positive or negative. How a session does not imply that one variable is impacting the other. Okay, so... All these three answers are statistical correlation related to statistical correlation techniques. So before that, let me take you to the extreme case of correlations. Like if you <coughs> keep side this uh, all statistical methods, mathematical methods, which are generally developed in last 200, 300 years earlier, uh, these calculations are not possible due to many restrictions. If we take a one extreme case of the philosophy or the philosophers or the poets, they try to relate some things, right? It might be one outcome with another outcome, one decision with the another decision, one human action with the another human actions. So everything is, but their uh, writings are the analyzed form is whatever they write. It's not just the correlation or association. They try to summarize that, that why that particular thing is happening. 
so that's a very uh, extreme or the third stage i can say in the this particular development of research that's not possible for all but see something where we try to correlate few things one thing with the another thing so let me take uh, with the statistical process this is basically what i found in the statistical methods is a bridge between descriptive stat and regression analysis we start we always start with the descriptive stats and if we found something uh, important like if few variables are looking like they are related or something then we try to figure out the correlation and if we found something in the correlation important in the correlation then we try to do the regression analysis so this is particularly a bridge between a descriptive stat and regression analysis and if you try to jump this particular bridge then there are chances that in this particular picture i can say if you try to swim or just try to jump from descriptive to regression then there are chances that you will do big mistakes in the analysis i'll give you few examples today what kind of mistakes we, you can do if you keep this correlation aside or won't give a proper attention to this particular methodology it's really important this particular regression tech uh, correlation methodology before applying any kind of correlation time series qualitative dependent variables or quantitative dependent variables correlation is important before trying to jump to the regression always first go through the correlation bridge so now the question comes what correlation is why we find it how we find it and how we measure it the like the answers you gave are more importantly related to how we measure it like degree of association association but the, uh, what i found more important is what actually is the correlation and why we why we find the correlation in the first hand and then it comes that how we find it means the measurement part comes later on well we need this particular thing so in the research if in the research methodology i can put the correlation for me it's the beginning of research when we start to relate one outcome with the another and that's the relation uh, that's the research i think that when we try to relate one thing with the another so this is the beginning of your research so is something if i can say this is the beginning of your particular research question whatever you are looking in your research areas so let me take this particular example this particular picture uh, i don't know it came from the social media or from the newspapers but during the lockdown in the month of may it was in the few newspapers in the north india and what actually this particular picture is describing is that this particular uh, city jalandhar city is approximately 120 or 50 km from these if you can see this uh, white glacier part here mountain parts generally from last many years it's not visible this particular uh, mountain range from this particular city but when this uh, complete lockdown was in place so pollution levels get reduced and air quality get improved this particular mountains were visible from more than 100 and 150 kilometers so it means if if i i can just get this particular picture so there was some relation in the air quality pollution and this transportation and water systems we are living so there are things related with each other so whenever we see something we try to look upon the relations that how particular thing is related with another thing and with this picture then later on many newspapers started writing the articles that in particular today's time period due to some in the, uh, in the more industrial activities our pollution levels are high so our quality of life is no no worse so means whenever you see something it might be some outcome or something you try to relate the things with one with the another why you do this is a general phenomena in the human i i found that every time it's not about that researchers try to do this in common day to day life we try to relate everything from morning to evening all the time we relate in general conversations or 
if it's come to uh, uh, this particular research area then i can i put this this particular way that this particular relation is you can find everywhere across time and space both now let you take to another example in this particular first picture in the left hand corner if you can see this particular uh, galaxy or the earth this orbits or this particular galaxy means many things in physical science we study that they are related with each other that's the one reason that in this particular science is now we are trying to go to mars and moon why these kind of heavy expenditures on this particular experiments and thing because we are trying to find few things which are earlier not possible and they are definitely important that's why we are spending so much on these kind of scientific instruments and all so if i put it in the across the time many things like uh, this big bang theory and there are many theories we try to put that how this particular galaxies and how they these particular uh, planets evolved around the time there are many science theories i i'm not a science student so i don't have that idea but they are looking the relations across the time if i come to a social science and let, now with these three one example i'll give you a, this particular in the right corner this particular house is traditional house in the tribal areas of himachal pradesh but if i can see in this time period now they are building this second one this particular house is now the structure is got change if i can look why this particular structure is changed the nearby state is punjab now in punjab we can see these types of our houses are in trend why these are in, these are not the traditional houses they are in the punjab and this change you can see across the countries and across the states in every state you can see the new houses structures are different than the previous structures so it is not just happening that okay uh, let's build in this particular this is looking like looking better than the previous no if we go traditional structures they are more environment friendly means it was not just that the, our ancestors built them by chance we don't know how many experiments they did before starting that particular structure and those structures were more environment friendly but now it is now i am taking example of punjab in punjab uh, many youth youth from the punjab generally migrate to western countries so from there they take these things in a trend that okay whatever activities they do in those particular countries their things come they come with them when they come back to their hometowns so this particular structure is like they had copied from the another countries where they live now nearby state himachal now people in himachal are trying to copy these structures from the punjab so you can see that across the time and space things are this is just i am trying to let that how across the time and space things are correlated you can interrupt me anytime whenever you have something new to add or something you are not getting so whenever uh, we in research you try to look upon the correlation factor first just think like this that are you able to understand how this particular thing related with another thing across the time or space because at a moment anything whatever is related one particular outcome with another outcome that result is not of that particular that's always either it's because of the across time means maybe few things happened in the past that's letting that particular outcome in the present or it may be a things related across the space like in economics we see this ratchet effect and all that we copy each other we follow someone else living standards and all we have something to copy so things are late always related might be across the time or my pick or the just space if in a particular moment they are related so first you have to identify that whatever variables you have those relations whatever you are trying to look are across the time or across the space or maybe both let's take another example uh, present of someone is might be a dream of dream for others now i'm again taking example of this himachal pradesh this particular If you can see this particular dresses and uh, girls this is a picture of the punjab university 
Punjab University is in a Chandigarh. This particular Chandigarh city is capital of two states, Punjab and Haryana. And this is a central part in the northern India where from Uttarakhand, Himachal, J and K, Punjab, Haryana, students came for studies. And this is a this particular city is uh, well administered and neat and clean. So many people want to live in this particular city. So maybe this particular uh, their particular decision of these particular girls may be thinking about these particular girls that maybe in future they want to become them. So whatever activities do, maybe do they also try to do activities from which can let this let them to this particular outcome. So it's again the cross the time. Now in this particular example, maybe across the space they are not related at a moment. But if I look upon the across the time, things are related. We or uh, maximum of our human actions are related to with something like we want to achieve that particular thing in the future. And that particular thing in the future, what we want to achieve, that aims or imaginations come from generally from others' perspective, how others are living, how others are doing their things. This is not always the true, but maximum times. So that's the one cause of relation between the things that things are always related with each other. Let's take uh, another example. Oh, this is how I can put the correlation. To connect the dots with passing time for various events across the space is an art to correlate things which are correlated but unseen for common eyes. Let me see if you are researching and try to look upon the correlation factor, then at least you have to connect the dots that dots might be related in the time is that things happen in the different time intervals or they are spread across the space. You have to look upon those particular dots. Then only you can just try to find those relations. It's not just a hit and trial method in research that we can take any two unknown random variables and we try to look upon the correlations. No, not at all. Before the correlation, you need to be make sure why you are trying to find the correlation methods. I'll come to method later on. That's a very uh, secondary thing that how we find this particular thing in the statistical measures. So first, what you are trying to find means you have to make sure whatever you're trying to find correlation or association, that particular variables are actually associated. That means you did your homework and you know why you're trying to look upon those correlations. So it's generally the connecting the dots. And if you are not able to do that in the research, then uh, in the previous slides, you can see this is a br bridge between descriptive stat and regression analysis. So whatever outcomes you will find after the regression analysis depends upon your correlation analysis. Means whatever factor you think are associated, then only you jump to the regression analysis. And if uh, you are not sure why you're doing that particular correlation or association thing, then don't expect anything from the regression analysis because you are not sure why you are doing that particular association part. So you have to make sure whatever you are doing. If I can take this another example, uh, this is from my field area where I'm currently working. This particular occupations like the semi nomads in Northwestern Himalaya, they are near extension in next 10 or 15 years. Uh, we will not find any semi nomads in northwestern Himalaya. So this is one way of living in the hilly states where there are so many nomads and so many nomads, but in coming 10, 15 years, they are in the extinction now. We will not see them in the future. Now, why this particular thing happened? Let's suppose I can, I, I start with this particular question that, okay, they are in the extinction means no more they are going to continue with this particular way of life, this same in my life. Let's suppose I have this particular notion or research question in my mind. Then I have to look upon many factors which are associated with this particular outcome. And that factors are not only possible to look upon the space miss in the cross-sectional studies. I have to go through the past now, how, how we go through the past is another thing, but I have to look upon. Now, for example, here I'm uh, in this particular picture, I put two things. 
in these hilly state where these semi nomads live let's suppose this particular community which is selling the milk and that's their way of surviving now they are not getting the price which actually they need to survive one of the reason is that now in all the towns and cities these our uh, uh, dairy milk companies like amul verka and many other firms they are everywhere so they are covering the all the market spaces so these semi nomads who won't have access to processed industry or transportation systems they are not able to cover those markets so uh, this is one reason that they are, they are not getting the price means their output is not getting the price so they don't want to continue with this particular occupation but this is not only the reason there are so many and other factors which led to this particular outcome that they don't want to continue with their traditional occupations so if whenever you have a particular notion in your mind where you try to look upon the correlation factors you have to connect the dots and that dots you have to connect across the space acro- and across the time as well otherwise uh, many a times you will find but every in the regression analysis you find that results will not give you accurate pictures but you will accept those results because you don't know what happened actually so you have to go through the time and space if you really want to do this particular association part in your research another example i can take nowadays uh, i don't know how many of you are observing these things or not and how much you travel outside the home or not this inc- uh, this particular thing is uh, increasing uh, this but i have observed in the this last 3 or 4 years because continuously i am traveling one place to another beggars on the streets are increasing in the small towns this uh, beggars i don't know recent survey this slum survey the last time this uh, uh, this census they did but that's not uh, where we can get some particular information related to this particular outcome this bagging things but if you can observe these things in last 10 years where you were not ever you are not finding that uh, many streets you were not able to see the beggars but now at every place you can find these beggars so let's suppose this is a one outcome right so if in the common uh, common language we can say if you are not researcher maybe karma ka phal hai means maybe this particular lady did something in the past or their ancestors were not able to get modernized with the time and nowadays they are excluded from the development process so they are in the bagging position now as a researcher we can't accept this right we have to look beyond those things so and we have to ask this question okay okay let us accept this is a karma ka phal hai but kiske home is she did something wrong in the past that's the reason she is in the bagging or someone else did something that's why she is in this particular position means this is something in the research you how you ask the research questions and then only this correlation thing came in the picture when you ask one particular question always question is related with two variables right one may be the outcome one may be the input but both are the outcomes they are related to each other but a question needs to be in particular form then only you can find better picture in the association let's take another example uh nowadays i think in the last 3 or 5 years when this uh, smartphones are more in the trend this television thing is no more in the picture means now because you have uh, the smartphones so these companies are so smart now this web series is in the trend early i don't think uh, if i go 5 or 6 years back why no one is watching web series or something but now you can see everyone watching the web series right so this web series are very thrilling things means we have to this is an entertainment source right similar is the correlation there is a thrill in the correlation what is in the web series you can see that in the web series there are events right 1 2 3 4 1 particular outcome they start with one outcome and then they go in the past they try to connect the dots that okay this thing is happened because of this this is investigation kind of thing and then 
they always keep this thrill with in the web series so that you can go by one by one to another so you can watch all the series all the episodes of the series similar is the correlation thing you have to connect the dots it's thrilling if you do it really uh, when you have this important research question in your mind and you enjoy this particular thing and you don't think i am doing this research why i have to do this research and you think oh this is really important i have to do this means you find something thrill in that particular that's only possible when you try to connect the dots and you pass through the time to connect those events and you try to look same things across the space and when this particular research question is in your domain you find thrill in your correlations and all other statistical and other methods the thing is we don't have a thrill in our research that's the main thing we are missing why we don't have a thrill because we don't have any it's not that we don't have a entertaining thing in the our research no it's not about the entertainment at all but the thing is we don't have actually true research question in our domain so that whatever things we are doing that's not pushing us to work hard or to motivate us to look upon things which are not possible to look with the general uh, dimensions or in the common sense or the common eyes means when you have a important research questions important here is not that one particular thing is important then no no whatever research question you have if you can prove its relevance that's important and there so and number of outcomes and problems which are important these days so if you have that particular thing then it's a thrill in the correlation that those results you found in the correlation that give you something that oh this is correlated i was not expecting this thing this kind of feelings you will get uh, i hardly find when researcher do these things they have something related with their this particular correlation things they just write this is just for words for them to write this oh this is a positive correlation this is a highly correlation this is a moderate correlation because you don't have any thrill in your correlation why you don't have a thrill because you are not done anything where you are connecting the dots and you not have done anything which you were trying to look upon the past or the present if you have something like that then there is a thrill in the correlation the another way of correlation previously when we don't have this educations and administration departments in every towns and municipalities and this village panchayats and all they have wise man in the village he take the like in the tribes it might be elder they take the decision on behalf of all the tribe or the village but they have this few things in as a character in their uh, leadership that is the person who connect dots properly from exper experience and take right decision for others and those are the wise men i think same is with the leaders the thing is connect the dots properly from experience and take right decisions so if you connect the dots properly that's about the correlations then only you can take right decisions in the statistical thing i can take i can say that taking decision is something based upon the regression analysis that we do in economics and commerce and many other social science domains and that this taking a correct decision is based upon if and if only you can connect dots properly and that's only possible when you have a when you do this particular thing seriously everything is correlated the task is are you able to correlate it in a proper order or sequence so now then question comes how we do this thing in a particular sequence and what's the way we do the correlation let's suppose i can take this particular thing right now we the unemployment is the big challenge for all the countries right for example we have this particular situation and we are facing this particular situation now if you want to try to look upon this particular uh, problem in hand then first thing you have to do is you have to look across the space and try to find is it micro or micro phenomena or macro phenomena means while you do the correlation or this kind of analysis in your research first always try to look upon this is it a micro phenomena means is something individual problem or is it happening with others also means something macro phenomena then if you have this particular answer then you have to go in time 
go back in time because whatever is the outcome like this unemployment right now we are facing it's not the present outcome that whatever means something is happened in the particular moment right now and that's why all are un unemployment no this notion is is not a correct way to look upon the outcomes outcomes are generally result of the past events or past inputs whatever we did in the past that's generally in this hindu mythology we say karma ka phala right if it can put in the uh, the statistics that it what it means it means whatever we did in the past whatever happened in the past that dots we have to connect then now how you can we can go back in the time in the early times the uh, we have this elders elders in our villages and families we can ask them they can tell us the story and the way out or but that's not the research, in research we do right we are researcher we are not just the travelers then the way we do that's the literature literature is our door to the past is that we can go you can go back in time as maximum as possible as maximum literature you can read means literature is the door or key to the past and here the thing is the more you more you read this literature about that particular situation the more things you will find and then more dots you have to connect now this is a particular art right how you can connect those dots it's not possible that everyone will connect all the dots no that's not possible but how much effort we put that's important here you have to go through lot of lot of literature literature again for one state to another many time i have found researcher that i am doing this particular thing for this particular state or country but i don't have a literature that's not the limitation look upon another state look upon the another country look upon the another dimension of that particular problem you definitely find the literature again with the literature now many times we found that how we connect the dots to connect the dots we have a wise man in our subjects and that we call the you can call them philosopher or the theorists to provide the theories and we have to see or study those theories to connect these dots and that's we call the theoretical framework in the literature right you have to fix those these dots and you have to see these dots with the theoretical framework then after doing this exercise then you have to come back to present and see are you able to connect the dots or not if yes then register your fir that i call synopsis with your supervisor and if your she is satisfied then register your case in the court of law that's your university where you have to uh, do this presentation for the synopsis in your respective departments but if you are not able to connect the dots then there are two possibilities but if fir got rejected to register that's possible it's not possible that whatever you have done you can you are able to uh, get confidence from the others department or the supervisor that whatever you did is something important so there are two possibility first evidences are not enough you were not able to travel in past with literature just tried in a library or google and few other sites now this is not a uh, simple to go back in the past with the literature and fit a theoretical framework here we need to put a effort now average duration you can you know you those of you who are phd students you know this that in india we have a one and a half year or up to two years just to pass the synopsis right means universities are giving us two years to connect these dots right and come with some this particular fir that we have to register and this is a this is a this time this two year means two years a large duration long duration like right in two year we can complete our masters but what we do in the phd as compared to masters i can say that not even 50% of that we justify in the phd the second is you are failed to convince not able to connect the dots properly means you did your homework properly but you are failed to convince or not able to connect 
not able to summarize the findings or fail to find the real importance of investigations and hero and villain of your story. That's your synopsis. Now, in this particular situation, the problem is you might done everything right. Okay, you've gone through the literature, you have a problem in the hand, but you are not able to connect the dots. And that is something art, analytical art. How you observe the thing and how you put them in an order, how you see particular outcome and how you go to the past for that particular outcome, whatever happened, how you read the literature, how you summarize that, and how you collected these evidences to support your synopsis. That is something where we have to put the efforts. Otherwise, many times this is very common that we uh, change topics, right? Uh, mostly, uh, I'm not sure how much is the percentage, but what I found that whatever uh, research proposal you have at the time of PhD admissions, when you submit the synopsis, that got changed. The main thing you change means you are not sure about that. So that's the outcome of this particular second thing that many times you do but you are not able to connect the dots and you change the topics now third possibility you connected the dots but not in a proper manner and you find something that's not means that's not appropriate that we uh, in the this particular st statistics we say spurious spurious correlations this is the biggest crime that that's many times it happened and I can and today I'll give you a few examples about it that it happened. Now in this particular example, I take this particular from the book that if I have these two variables, life expectancy or television spoil you, I can look upon this scatter plot. I can see this is a positive relation, right? Lifestyle life expectancy is positively associated with that televisions per person. Now, what conclusion we found from this particular, let's suppose we have these two variables. Should we conclude that increasing the number of televisions extend lifetimes? If so, we should send television instead of doctors to developing countries. Not only is the association with life expectancy stronger, but televisions are cheaper than doctors. This is just an example, I mean, this is just a hypothetical situation, but many a time I found this researchers do this particular thing that they do hit and trials and whatever variables they found that they are associated, they took those variables for their uh, hypothesis and research questions. But this is not the way we do. Or many times I see in this that in their third or fourth year, while they try to analyze their studies, they found insignificant results and then they do hit and trials again and whatever variables they found are related, they only show those results. This is something I'm saying, this is a crime. Why is this a crime? This is not the way the statistical methodology work. In the statistical methodology or the econometrics methodology, theory comes first, then is your uh, particular mathematical or econometric model, then the collection of data, and then your statistical econometric study. It's not the vice versa, that first you have a data, then you have did hit and trial, you found something important, then now you can fi fix the model accordingly, and accordingly, you try to study the theories. It's happening. It's happening everywhere. Because we need few significant results with the data so that we can cover, complete our PhD in a time period. But that's not the way we have to look upon the correlation or associations. And that's not the way. The true way in this particular situation was that life expectancy we have to see with the doctors. Is it right variable here is the doctor. Now, uh, why this thing? Many times this thing will happen because of lurking variables. This lurking variable, we say some third factor, which is common in two factors, and that's causing this particular type of relations. Means in this particular two situation, I can say television per person life expectancy and doctors per person. But if theory doesn't fit, no, so man, that's the first step. Now, theory, you have to start with the theory. Means it's not that uh, you can blame theory after correlation, right? You always start with the theory. If if your correlation results are not as per your theory, first is you have to investigate that whether is there any mistake. If you think the mistake is not there, something is with the theory. And that's the contradictory result. That's the another, that's why we have this alternative hypothesis, right? In that case, you will go with the alternative hypothesis that this particular theory is not working. So these, 
the other result whatever you have those are important then you have to do the reinvestigation that okay i have found this particular results now you have to reinvestigate and find implications for those results okay this is the outcome so why this particular thing is happening so that's also a research miss but the theory is the first thing miss we start with the theory we don't start with the data and the statistical and then we try to fit the theory no theory is first according to the theory variables then you have in every case means i get, i didn't get this particular thing hello hello hi yeah yeah so i was saying that uh, like for every case it has to be the same thing that you first go through the theory and then the next steps yeah the statistical and this research methodology is this is that first we have uh, theory generally what happen in the social science like in the phd research we start with the particular problem right like i am working on poverty or one is working on the employment that things we do then okay. how we start we start like that okay what are the theoretical frameworks for that particular problem that why this particular thing is happening and from particular theoretical framework we start to look upon the other factors yeah so that's what i'm asking that we do have the theoretical framework for every study yeah we need definitely we need we need this background that our evidence is right for our evidence is we need the reason and that's the reason this statistical won't give us the causation causation yeah. is only come from the theory if we don't mm -hmm. have a theory in the background so right. we can't say anything with the causation and we need results with the causation right to take the steps we need things with the causation so for mm -hmm. causation the theory we need in the background okay. and if the theory doesn't fit then we have our alternative hypothesis Yeah, yeah. Then we have this new findings. Might be that, but in in the theory, that thing that might not fit. Like for example, uh, free market systems. Like uh, let's suppose this theory might fit with the USA, but not fitting with the India. So that might hmm. be because results may vary from one particular place to another place, from particular year to another year. So that may vary. So we can say that okay, due to these particular things, these results are not supporting this particular argument. That's also when something new that we are finding. Okay. So if basically it it needs to have a theory to support the evidence and other stats also, and otherwise if it is not, then we have to uh, see for other options. Yeah. Then we have to go with the reinvestigation. That's where the new theories right. come, right? This is the way new theories come. That right. whenever they found something new. then they do reinvestigation maybe there's reinvestigation maybe the assumptions many time we found in economic literature that this assumption mm -hmm. is not fulfilling so mm -hmm. that's the another way of doing the things that okay this thing is not fitting so let's see why this is not happening that's a new research then right like in uh, in my research only uh, like i'm working on education and labor market so uh, the human capital uh, theory which we have so it states that i mean as your education increases your income increases but it doesn't fit as we are seeing the employment scenario and also in other things as well so uh, somewhere the theory is definitely contradicting over here so i mean still i have to obviously take that theoretical background of that theory only but again i mean this is uh, this is where i get stuck that how to take it further Okay, I got your uh, thing. Yeah, this happens in India and many countries that education and income you won't find this relation. That's not uh, the thing wrong with the theory. The thing is how we capture those variables. Here, the problem is not with the theories actually. The problem is with the variables that how we collecting those variables information from where this data is coming. One is might be a cross section. Another is might be a cross sectional things it's a combination of data different type of variables and in this type of situation which you are facing that income and education correlation factors are either low or it's not uh, significant correlation right. between education and that's because of the di diversification in the occupations for example in india maybe a shopkeeper is earning he might be a just 8th or 10th standard out and and one uh, a class officer is earning less than that particular individual right mm -hmm. yeah. 
because we have so much diversification in the occupation so in uh, this particular income won't lead us to this conclusion that education will increase because we are looking uh, in the cross sectional uds and that's a diversified this type of studies we have to see first which particular from where we are collecting this particular data how these variables are generated means there are many reasons that we won't find these particular things which are in the theory but we won't found in our statistical studies and okay. that's we have to generalize then that why this is happening okay so okay because i cannot make the theory uh, i mean sorry i cannot like if even if it contradicts i still have to take the support of that theory only because it is somewhere true that yeah somewhere because we can this thing always keep in this mind we have to reject the logic then we need a some another logic theory is something logically right that's about some uh, decision making process about the human actions these theories are and if we have to contradict theories we need some strong logics behind that and unless we have those log logics we can't say that this theory is wrong it might be because of my particular area of study those particular individuals or my nature of variables so that's why i'm saying we have to reinvestigate that why that particular thing is happening rather jumping to contradict the theory first we have to reinvestigate the process thank you so much okay 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 yeah as the via that we have to see but uh, yeah the via but in the nss unit uh, this data it's not uh, possible because uh, with the change like in this particular education the problem is that we define this with the education groups right graduation and above middle and that particular occupation cover particular group cover so much diversification of occupations and with the change in the level of education it's not easy to capture the change in the income because within this particular educational group there is a so much diversification in the occupation so this uh, on the secondary or in the primary on the general study these kind of things to capture these kind of things but yes if you do this thing uh, across the countries then you can see that the average education uh, number of years of education of the developed countries and you can take average average uh, number of years of education of the developing countries then you can find this education and income linkages standard of living and education so what i am saying that this is the methodology part means uh, this is not something it's not that the theory is incorrect but the problem is how we are and like same particular thing like same thing i can prove with the cross uh, countries analysis means i can prove that correct but in the indian scenario With the secondary data, that's not possible. So that is the maybe the data thing, right? We have a limitations of data. So the uh, another now I'm taking few examples where this correlations led us to something, but that's not the true. Let me first take uh, this FRA Forest Right Act of 2008. In 2006, government took it back, and then it came Forest Right Act 2006. uh maybe few of you are aware about this particular story what actually happened that in 2002 forest right act the government took all the rights from the tribals and all the this particular indigenous peoples who were living in the forest and they were outside the forest due to this forest right act because those environmentalist and researchers and policy maker was thinking that this for deforestation and all is just because of this tribal communities they are exploiting the forest later on after uh, many ngos and social institutes it found that it's not true the deforestation is not because of the tribals or indigenous peoples others are included in these kind of activities and it's this large scale displacement is not the solution to this particular problems their lives are in the this but they're struggling so in after four years of protest government took it back and the new forest right act came in the picture and then they got back their rights of living in the forest and using for forest by by products so here uh, if i come to this 2002 fra where they restricted tribal entry now definitely policy makers and researcher took this right this particular decision means research whatever researchers are researcher or advisors of the policy makers and then they took this particular decision government took this particular decision it means 
the way they connected this dot that deforestation all with the tribal's activity was incorrect they were not able to capture that information in a proper manner their cost benefit analysis are not proper and after so many n number of studies from the environmentalists anthropologists sociologists it found that 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 conclusion was not correct and government took it back so you can see that many a times if we have this third particular that if we connect dots that are not in a proper way we can put many lives on a stake so this is again the i can i think that the researchers uh, it's uh, i can blame researchers only i am also a researcher that if we don't do our duty properly then our conclusion might put others life at a stake so we have to see all the dots across the space and time otherwise it's not possible second case i can take farm size productivity debate if uh, you are agriculture student then you definitely studied this farm size productivity debate what happened in the 60s and 70s when this farm size studies came uh, many uh, agriculture economists they concluded that small size farms are more productive as compared to the big farms but later on this isi uh, professor ashok rudha i think now he's died i am not sure he published three or four papers in the series and he proved that their correlation technique was incorrect actually what they did that they didn't even check the significance of the correlation factor and they jumped to the regression analysis and after let's suppose uh, 10 or 7 districts you found significant regression results for three uh, districts and you concluded that it's happening everywhere in the industry and you generalize that phenomena that small size farms are more productive as compared to the large farm so this conclusion and later on this was not the small implication for this particular uh, research later on government did this land reforms right we are aware of that that they took land from the big landlords and they distributed to the small small uh, tenant farmers so that particular decision came because of particular research in that research there was some mistake in the correlation and regression analysis and which led to a some another type of uh, conclusion and policy making decision which was actually not based upon the statistical facts there was some mistake in that particular say and this particular debate uh, in the agriculture studies we always study that how this thing particular this particular thing is happened and there were big economists in this particular debate like amartya sen and they were on this favor that small size farm size are productive but isi professor shokr they approved that their correlation technique was incorrect so this was the big debate this land reforms and happened and later on we found that statistical methodology was incorrect so it can happen on a big scale that we can't even imagine then the another thing the current situation if i can take extra credit is the solution to reduce unemployment and make india self reliant if you can see this packages when it came in the lockdown period government announced that is loan schemes new loan scheme right you, if you want to start the business you can start government is ready to provide you the credit it means what it means that how this idea came definitely government has this economic advisors right we have a ies officers we have a research units every state have a statistical department so this notion is came like that if we can provide the credit to the person who was start to start this particular business it can solve the problem but it's the this is a inflation theories we study right this is a one of the theories where we everything link with the money and inflation and all but this is or the business cycle theories but this is not the true right in india or in any other countries the credit is not the thing that with which we can make a self reliant we need other infrastructure other social overhead things other infrastructures means these kind of uh, shortcut solutions like uh, another example that's very debatable i don't want to comment but let's take it like a uh, reservation in the 10% in the general category that is it a solution that uh, with the reservation the unemployment problem with good getting a solution definitely no as economic students we know that right it's the demand supply things that if uh, there is a mismatch in the labor market unemployment going to be repair. either it's a 90% reservation or a 10% it won't change much if things are not in a proper manner right then uh, this particular thing 
in the, yeah now it's october right in the hilly states already winter has started and in november and delhi this fog this the last time three four years delhi is facing this problem many times they shut down even schools and offices because of this particular environmental pollution pollution problem now what they found is that that in the nearby states especially in haryana and punjab uh, farmers are burning their paddy straw uh, that's the main cause of this fog in the delhi so from last 2 3 years in punjab it's now uh, illegal to burn the paddy and governments started to provide some cash incentive to the farmers if they don't do this particular activity but is it the solution for the farmers still farmers are burning the paddy straw and this year now i think october yeah it's a mid october in next coming 10, 10 or 15 days this things again it's going to start it's not going to stop because here something is missing that i i see thing into farmers that why you are doing this saying that uh, if if let's suppose i have a farm big farm of 10 acres or something that if i cut this particular paddy and then keep it then that's a time consuming labor intensive activity i don't have that much time so i have to burn it right I, means i don't have a, that money and infrastructure or that support so i have to do it now government is thinking that okay we can make it illegal it will not happen so this is not like in this particular case again i can say something is means you have not taken the farmers in the picture and you just jump to a one particular policy or the this particular law that now it's illegal so you have not properly connected the dots means whatever the main part in this particular thing that you have not taken in the confidence and you did not did any proper research so we are pre- pre- now delhi is facing this particular problem right another example if i can take this particular thing this tablik e jamaat is in the uh, newspapers when it came we all know that that every news channel was showing that particular thing now at that particular time i was uh, in himachal and there is this particular semi nomad co- uh, community which belongs to this particular muslim religion generally and police and administration stopped them in the borders that's their time to migrate to the upper upper summer pastures but because of this particular news everywhere they stopped them so this is something when we try to generalize just uh, without analyzing proper consequences and proper connecting dots and we correlate the things then many big mistakes will happen and that might cause a big cost or the put lives at a stake so as a researcher i am again and again saying this is the, to connect the dots with passing time for various events across the space is an art to correlate things which are correlated but unseen for common eyes so this particular thing we have to do and that's only come when we do this particular proper literature proper theoretical framework proper traveling traveling i can say like uh, we do secondary like the researchers who are doing phd's on the secondary data uh, it's i i just request you guys please uh, go outside the universities and at least visit your uh, study areas means what ex- actually happening in the grounds your your secondary data and literature want to give you the true position because that's not possible at least you have to spend if you are if you are doing a four year phd at least minimum i think one year needs to be spent on the field otherwise how you will get this notion that what exactly is the cause and what are the factors associated how you connect these things with the uh, past and other things uh, just uh, book and data won't help you because secondary data is are not they are not collected because of your research question their purposes are different and we are using that indirectly so it's not possible to find these results significant results the thing is you have to see in the ground what actually is happening the another the true cause for delay in finding the solutions for socio economic psychological and environmental problems is the outcome of either the failure of researchers to connect the dots in a proper manner across the space and time or lack of determined qualitative researchers in any particular geographical space and that's the thing like india we are facing right now that although we have i think now more than 900 universities in india so you can multiply the researchers i don't have the exact figures although this new all india higher education service providing these data sets from last 10 years let's see another case this have have again happened with this uh, tribal areas 
uh, Delhi was facing the electricity shortage in the summers. So they did this with the Himachal government and they built a dam in the Himachal Pradesh, which is providing electricity to the Delhi and also the wa uh, water. Now, okay, Delhi was facing the problem, so they found this solution. But what actually happened that many people got displaced and large scale deforestation have thousands of thousands of trees were cut in for this particular hydro uh, power project. So before jumping to any conclusions, the cost benefit analysis are very crucial. And I, uh, I'm i not aware about this IIT Kanpur and all, uh, they have started this cost benefit analysis course or not. But if I see in the Europe, they have this course in the economics cost benefit analysis before, especially for big projects means this is their methodology that whenever government announce any big project, first they do cost benefit analysis it's not like our country like uh, if a uh, major of the majority of the politicians support particular uh, argument or particular uh, law it got passed no this is not the way they do proper like japan and all these other developed countries in the european they do cost benefit analysis and if it proved that cost is less as compared to the benefit. And in this benefits and cost analysis, they do both tangible and intangible cost benefit analysis. There are many intangible things which are not easy to capture in monetary terms, but they do. And then they start new projects. So that's the one way of doing the things. Means before trying to do anything, you have to look upon the intangible things, the other costs associated with those factors, like in the uh, JNU Abhijit Saint, so I don't think uh, currently, maybe Nishat know that, that he is te uh, te teaching or not, he teach a general agriculture economics course. And many examples he gave us in the classes that in India, especially in the agriculture scenarios, in many things we found that the benefit who are taking, right? For example, this particular electricity scale, daily population is getting the benefit that benefit is something going to someone else and the cost is paying who is something else. Like the tribals the got displaced, they are paying the cost. Now Delhi population is getting the benefit. So those who are getting benefit is not reimbursing the cost to the those who are losing the things. That means improper or I can say this is a, if we have a, in, this imperfect market scenarios in developing countries. So, where we are not able to connect the dots properly until and till the day this thing will get continue we will not able to find socio-economic psychological and environmental problem solutions because it's need a regress studies then only we can find few solutions and that need uh, determination in the research done. that's what is lacking in this particular country or any many developing countries i'm not saying i'm doing it or the all are not doing there are researchers who are doing but we need more then only we can find some solutions so that's uh what is actually this is correlation is all about this is something where you try to connect few things one thing with the another one outcome with the another one output with the inputs or decision of one person with the decision of the another person's this is something where your research question lies and you start that's why I'm saying this is the beginning of research. And it's a bridge between your descriptive stats and regression analysis. So that's how I put this correlation. And I think it's really important thing because whatever you start with the correlation that you do in the regression and other uh, regression techniques. So if uh, whatever variables they are picking in the correlation, is not properly formulated or not as per the literature or as per the situation, then our findings won't lead us to the conclusion which actually we might be thinking or might be a theoretical framework or grind position is suggesting because it might be a problem of your methodology, might be because of the data collection, might be a formulation of variables or your proxy variables, if you are doing a secondary data analysis, it doesn't mean theory is incorrect or their solutions are not which you are thinking, but might be because of the methodology part. So whenever you start this correlation and thing, just do this proper analysis. Don't just start with the data part and correlation and node. 
the thing is you have to go through the literature and you have to go through the past what actually happened how it happened our present decisions are always related with the our past decisions so similarly we have to go through the past decision what actually happened why this particular outcome like in this particular time period i am uh, 90% sure that new research papers are going to coming in years and people are going to blame this corona virus for the large unemployment but this is not the true actually before the corona virus in india unemployment is at its 43 years of peak if we go through with the nss unemployment data sets we already at the peak of unemployment and and this particular thing actually exposed our imperfection in the market and policy making domain and with the uh, just lockdown for two months now i i don't know the actual accurate figures right now is it at 18% 20% or 25% but this unemployment rates are alarming and its consequences are for next 10 and 15 years means this is not that this thing is going to stop for next one or two years this consequences the changes people do in their living standards and the changing they take for their children's education and all these implications are for next 10 and 15 years for example this online education uh, yesterday i think i was uh, it is in the newspaper that microsoft maybe maybe is going to allow its employees to work from home not for the next year like for all, forever you can work from home you see many the reason is that why we pay so much rent to the uh, ma- ma- this uh, major city is why we pay rents if like in the it companies if it's possible that we are paying the rent we can take work from the home and it's possible similarly in the education maybe things go change we can keep continue with the online system because this giving us a flexibility to study from one place to another place without traveling and all and uh, all other restrictions so similarly there are many consequences but the way to look upon like maybe you are also going to take this unemployment or any outcome of the corona in the coming future then i suggest you don't think that this corona is the main cause it might be 10% might be 20% but i am sure it's not the because our markets are in perfection there are many factors which are associated so have to you have to connect those dots that what actually happening in the before the corona and what happened after the corona so you might find some linkages in the variables or the outcomes so the next thing is comes that okay theory theory is okay everything is okay how we measure it statistically that's the what actually this course is that how we find this in the statistics uh i can take this one particular thing before you do this correlation analysis there are few uh, things you have to keep in mind before start correlation analysis although i'll come to this that how we do this particular correlation analysis now the solutions which are f- from the statistics side the first simple solution is like look upon the scatter plot means like in this particular example if it is readable uh, here in this particular situation the means in statistical measures the first simple way is scatter plot means you can st- start with the scatter plot for two variables and you can see whether is there any type of association or any type of dots you can see either it's both are moving in the same direction or in the opposite direction or there is no association you can just look subjectively from the scatter plots that's the one way you can uh, start looking upon correlation from the statistical measures the another way means uh, this is, okay the state documents i can tell you with the scatter plot for scatter plots in graphics we already did this bar bar chart pie chart histogram box plot for uh, two variables there is a two way graph here you can uh, create and you can select scatter now here you have few things right uh, line graphs are only for time series unless you have a time series variable 
don't pick this line option for cross sectional there is always a scatter plots scatter plot uh, let's suppose we need a simple plot right now you have to put your uh, y variable let's suppose i want to see i am using same data set i want to see is there any association between math score and science score now here i am taking this hypothetically or just for example but as i described to take these two variables first i need a one theoretical sound theoretical background that why i am looking this is a particular association then only i can pick these two variables then here you can just type yeah, accept okay now it will show you uh, the scatter plot for these two particular variables now in this particular case let's suppose this is the dots we have right scatter plot for 200 observation whatever sample size this data set have now we have to see with the scatter plot it's just uh, something which can give us a hint that is there any association or is it then is it a positive negative or means positive means both are moving in the same direction negative means in the opposite direction and if there is no association I mean it's a scatter plot and it's covering all the spaces so there is no association so there are these three possibilities uh, if i can take this example yeah these three possibilities might be positively related uh, might be negatively in the opposite directions or there is no correlation means the, these two factors are not associated means in when we come in the statistics then we can't do this in the causation that okay this is moving that's why another is moving uh, these kind of generalization based upon the statistical results you have to avoid because statistics is not telling that why they're associated it's only telling are they associated or not why are they associated that comes from your theoretical framework whatever research question you have whatever findings you have that's one of the statistics statistics only help you to find the association in some numbers now uh, scatter plot you can practice uh, this different type of scatter plots like here i have a three variables like i want to compare science score with the writing score and science score with the math score means uh, three variables at a hand in a particular graph then you have this particular option but you have to uh, type in the graph this particular data command just to scatter now you in first it will come two variables with which you want to compare with the third variable for example i want to compare this writing score and math score with the science means write with the science score math with the science score if you press enter it will compare now this red dot is for comparison of science or math score and blue dots are for science and writing score so this is a uh, scatter plots means how you can see things with the scatter plot so it will give you some hint that is there any association or not but the thing is in especially in the economics and all we need some specific number rather than just a subjective answer we need a specific number to reach to a some particular conclusion because uh, as we are doing in the descriptive stats we are doing it with the inferential statistics and for hypothesis statistics we need some parameter right with which we can compare this non parametric methods so here in this particular case in the correlation or association again we need this particular some particular statistical number which can tell us one particular objective answer so to do that uh, this it's not possible with the scatter plots so later on now i, I don't exactly uh, know this how this covariance thing came in the picture but this was i found this is a something really amazing solution means uh, i don't know uh, i didn't put so much effort to find that 
who gave this covariance solution and how it came in the picture but it's for me it's really uh, amazing thing right how with the simple statistics like the mean this particular technique is uh, give us the uh, this answers that is it positively related or negatively related or there are no associations although uh, don't compare this with this particular picture r is not possible with the covariance covariance is something where you can only find the association if i can take this particular demonstration with the excel sheet then it will be more clear that what actually is the idea behind this correlation measurement in statistics and this is something which i found really interesting but this is so simple solution they gave us and many time i think that why we don't have these kind of answer for uh, many difficult situations that we can't do these innovative things maybe we are not bothering about or maybe we are not trained like that that do something innovative so okay uh, now here i am give you some demonstration for this particular covariance technique now you have to see only the numerator term here in the numerator term when values which are using to correlates can be uh, right now gagan uh, okay yeah gagan okay uh, thanks gagan for reminding me currently uh, i am trying to give you demonstration for quantitative variables okay again yes i forgot to tell this there's again in the correlation method we have to see first is it a quantitative variable or is it a categorical variable for categorical variable we have a separate uh, types of methods and for quantitative we have a separate type of methods for categorical variables if it's a ordinal scale then we can go with the spearman rank correlation that i'll do tomorrow then if it's your nominal scale variable we can go with the chi square association but that's not tell you the uh, high low moderate no that's only tell you associated or not that's only means we have a limitation with the nominal scale variables but if it's a quantitative variable then we have a uh, this technique covariance and uh, this carl pearson rank correlation so uh, carl pearson correlation coefficient of correlation rank correlation is for the spearman rank correlation so today i am just trying to describe you the process behind the quantitative variables and how this we do with the covariance and what were the limitations with the covariance and why this carl pearson correlation coefficient method is important that came after because we have a limitations with the covariance technique the values for uh, which are using to correlate can be in percentage form or any restriction I mean, that depends on the nature of variable if you have a, both the variables in a percentages then it's okay means the scale of the variable that depends upon the nature of variable if you have uh, all the observations in the like for example you have a something in the percentage state wise for two variables then you can do for the percentages if it's a, some another Uh, continuous or descriptive stats then you have to go with that but if it's a case of percentages uh, like in the nominal scales means when you have only few categories then you have to do this correlation with the chi square techniques when then you can't apply this carl pearson coefficient that will you get that clarity while we do this particular thing actually uh, why this confusion is created what i found is that percentage is a uh, not a variable right like if uh, male and female like gender is my variable then within gender i can count how much female and means i have this percentage figure now thing is i want to see the correlation of gender with some other variable that's a separate thing or i want to see the relation of the this percentage is figure of state wise gender figures with some another that's something different so there this confusion is created that if you have for example you have a some percentage figure like uh, literates let's take a literate how much literates are in a particular state now for let's suppose you are taking a 30 states or you are taking 50 countries now for 50 countries for this particular variable that's a number of literates right you have 
fifty percent figures. Now this particular per fifty percent figure is not a categorical variable. Now you have separate value for all the countries or states, and that is measurable. So that's it. That's a discrete or continuous data. So that's the some that's that variable. That's what that variable is. That's number of literates, right? Number of literates percentage you have calculated for the countries. So this is how this confusion is. Many time I have found that students have that percentage is for categorical or is it for quantitative? So that you have to take care of. So uh, I was on this covariance. Just I land with the covariance today. To tomorrow we'll do this Spearman and uh, chi square or then first the Carl Pearson uh, Carl Pearson correlation coefficient. Okay, so after the uh, scatter plot now, because we need some specific numbers, so this covariance is in the picture. Now, this covariance is what this actually now. Just uh, look upon this numerator term x minus x mean means uh, whatever variable you have x and y, and uh, another variable with deviation from that particular mean. This is about quantitative variables. So how this particular technique will work? Here I can take x and then x mean y y mean, right? Means in original form, I'm taking hypothetical. Let's suppose I have this uh, x data. I'm putting any hypothetical numbers, and you have y data. Now, uh, this particular covariance, it, it needs to be a, these techniques are for quantitative data sets. The first thing is you have to find the mean. I'm just taking a hypothetical. Let's suppose, okay, or first, uh, if you want, you can calculate this, some of this particular X, 19 or 19 divided by four. So it's approximately, 4.9 and something. Hypothetically, I'm taking this mean is 5. Okay. Now, this particular 7, 7, 14, and 5. Again, 19. Coincidentally, it's 19. Again, it's 5. Approximately 5, something, 4. Point something, 4.99. So, I'm taking hypothetically, it's 5. So, how this technique will work? First, you have to find the mean. Then you have to take a deviation from the mean. For so this particular case, uh, two, two minus five, and so on. Wait, it's not tracking. Okay, it's minus uh, one. I'm not familiar with the state tax being positive one. Then you have to. Similarly, we have to take division for y. Minus two, minus one. Five minus five, zero and two. Now this technique will work with these combinations of. This is. Uh, X minus x mean and this is y minus y mean now let's get go back to this particular numerator term it's a multiplication of these two deviations these two deviations so let's do this particular x minus x mean Multiply by y minus y mean. Now here the thing is in the covariance. If things are like positive, positive, now outcomes will be okay. I can take this particular thing here. Okay, it is not allowing me to put this particular without numbers. 
Okay, so uh, verbal can explain. If these two deviations are in the same direction, like if it's a positive positive, the outcome will be positive. Again, if it's a negative negative, outcome will be negative. Like in this case, three minus three multiply by minus two, it's six. Then minus one with the minus two, outcome is two, zero. Again, the positive deviation, positive, positive, so result will be positive. So if you take a summation of this particular number, it's 10. And if you can divide this particular number with three, you will find some 3.33, some covariance. So that's how this covariance work. But the thing is how these numbers will, if associations are in same direction, like if in the x particular variable from the means particular observation is in the negative form means either it's a less or either it's a greater two possibilities are there right so for same individual means for these variables are for the same individual right then only we can find correlate it's not like one variable is for china another variable is for india uh, that's not way high we find correlation right that some base needs to be a common so that base was it's a cross-sectional study, then individuals are the base. So for first individual, for any particular variable, if its outcome is less than the mean, and for the same variable for same individual, another variable for the same individual, the outcome is less than the mean. If we multiply with these two, then we will get a positive number. But it means it means that both are moving in the same direction. When we will get this negative, when one is either less, so let's suppose one is less than the mean, another is greater than the means. Means for the same individual in one variable, the value is less than the mean, and for another variable, value is greater than the mean. Then, if both are in the opposite direction, then you will find negative results. Means both are moving in the opposite direction. So if you have this situation where in few observations are in the same direction, few observations are in the opposite direction, then you will find scatter plot like uh, totally diversified. This fourth case, there is no association. But if they are in the same direction, like positive, positive, then you will find positive correlations. Even if they are negative, negative, you will find this positive correlation. But if they are, but if all the values are in the uh, negative, like opposite directions, then you will find a negative correlation. And if it's a mix of the values, like positive, positive, negative, negative, uh, few are in the opposite directions, then you will find there is no correlation. The, this is how this covariance technique is worked. And this is simply, right? Just take the division from the average. Uh, theoretically, I can say, if it's about the individuals, it's that you can take deviation of that particular outcome of individual. Let's take example of uh, mean number of education, right? A number of years of education of particular individuals. Let's suppose those are the individual whose uh, number of year of education is less than the average number of year of that particular area, whatever you have in their study. And another variable is like mm, this so many saying the income variable is there. So if the but actually with the theoretical background, the answer needs to be for the so many cases that for the individuals, whose number of years of mean a number of years of education are less than the mean, their income needs to be again less needs to be the less income as compared to the mean income of those individuals if if she found similar kind of data that both are less than the average and for other individuals who are above the average their number years of education are more than the mean number year of education and their income is also more than the mean number of years uh, mean number sorry 
mean income of that particular group then only she will find positive correlation about these two variables but since because here we have a this diversification that it's not true that who have a less education the, his number of your education is less than the mean it's not true that he definitely getting less income to the other mean group no it's not because in india you know that this is not the true fact that he or she might be due to some business or some any other method might be earning more than the individuals or mean number of your education is more than that particular individual so maybe you are not getting any correlation so that's the thing how this covariance covariance work but there are some uh, limitations with this particular technique one limitation is that it depends upon the units of measurement like in this particular case uh, if i change the unit of x let's suppose these values are in thousands then results will change right means units now let's suppose you are trying to like this education right in if you have one education variable in your hand that's a group variable right or you might be have an absolute number of air of educations its units is different like means variation is how much from uh, i'm taking the average case from 5 to maximum 17 right that means the post graduation but income is variation is too high right the income is might be a 5000 per month to a 1 crore or the 2 crore the variation too high and if you try to look upon the variation uh, correlation in this kind of two variables so it's totally nature is different that might be one cause of not getting a correlation between them maybe outliers are there there are so many things so many which can lead to this particular finding that correlation is so in this case let's suppose your uh, units are different now here this mean is going to change it's going to be in hundreds this is in the one or three only single digit number so if you multiply this this particular numerator going to be increased right just because of units a change in the units and if units are small the value is going to be like if your units are in the fractions then value is going to be less so you can't say that uh, correlation high or low means that something like i can take this particular picture yes we need this particular information right is there a moderate or weak correlation or it's a high correlation so this uh, analysis is not possible with the covariance because it's it may change with the just because of change in the units that's one limitation so the easy solution but uh, the statistics they found if is the standardization if it's uh, visible this formula now right, these days we are using this carl pearson coefficient right pearson correlation coefficient formula but this is actually this is actually to standardize both the variables to make it unit free uh, in graduations i have seen that students cram these five or six type of correlation formulas and in examination we put those type of questions where students are required to cram these formulas but i think rather than doing this thing uh, we can teach them that how these formulas came in the picture and what are the limitations that's more important that what i found but i can't do anything about that that's the way the, uh, right now universities are working so this was actually the standardization and if we multiply this that's the correlation formula you can see here this is just a standardization what standardization is in the normal distribution we did take a, a gap from the mean divide that particular observation with the standard deviation and if we do this process for both the variables now it's unit free so this problem got resolved now if you have a one variable in thousand and lakhs of unit and another is just in the fractions it won't impact because now it's a unit free although there are there are other methods to do data unit free uh, that that actually i was uh, asked nas ma'am to collect amit the professor amitabh kun those notes if possible because sir was uh, sir was teaching in this class that how to make data unit free and there are uh, many other methods 
but there are few axioms which needs to be take your file we do these kind of uh, standardization processes so might be file code chance after this series i will also try to explain you maybe some with another platform maybe another time that how we do standardization because that's more important while we calculate this inequality measures and all then that's really important that actually how you are doing unit free so this is just a standardization process to make it unit free and now this is a correlation formula this is carl pearson coefficient of correlation formula this is just a division of the mean and we multiply take a summation divide it with the respective standard deviations and multiply with the if it's a sample n minus 1 because we lost one degree of freedom this is now these formulas are same you can use any one of that but these are same correlation is what now covariance divided by respective standard deviation so that's the correlation coefficient formula these days we are using because now uh, we sort out this problem of unit the uh, different units so these are the same means is all the four no, uh, notions are same you will get this correlation coefficient just a uh, few things to keep in mind that while we calculate correlations it's not uh, in the picture that which one is dependent which one is independent both the variables are independent means uh, we can't say that it, this is dependent causation you have to take care of you can't say causation based upon the correlation so few things you have to keep in mind while you calculate correlation coefficients Uh, this is again i am taking from the textbook that's the last today i have because it's already 4:30 so these things you have to take care of T tomorrow we will do this uh, in the practical in the data software carl pearson coefficient formula then for uh, ordinal scale we will do spearman rank correlation and if still we have a time then i'll try to do with the nominal scale chi square association but for that i first i have to give you some brief about the chi square distribution so that uh that is good if i we will do that on the badness day so that we can understand categorical scenario also and thursday onward we will start with the regression so this is the last part for today uh, i can understand that you were tired for these two hour classes you might have a class in the morning or many other activities so just a last part first don't say correlation when you mean co association means association something different uh, it's just a uh, theoretical sense or notion of the association but correlation when you describe it in numbers and that numbers is in the linear association then you can say correlation uh this particular these formulas quantitative formulas don't apply this to the categorical variables for categoricals although we don't have a choice but we can max we can look about the association with the hypothesis testing of chi square distributions make sure uh, this is uh, for the summary so may you have to go through go you can check your data sets first this that uh, is association is linear means go through your scatter plots if not then you need something because let's suppose this is the case first it's increasing then decreasing positive cancel out with the negative correlation and we will get a nearby zero correlation coefficient although this is high correlation here first is increasing and decreasing but because of we apply to uh, one single technique to all the data set and we didn't this thing think about the linearity or anything so there are chances we will get a low correlation so you have to go through the scatter plot be aware about the outliers that might be the case so now outliers needs to be checked uh, because for example income the case in income you case i can take that few persons have income in the lakhs and crores and there might be their educations are too low maybe they are uh, just cancel outing your correlation strong relationships so take care of the outliers so in that case try to calculate correlation with the outliers and without outliers how we identify the outliers we did it in the box plot diagram that uh, median plus quartile 4 and minus quartile 1 plus minus uh, 1.5 of interquartile range uh, that's the range we keep to find outliers whatever the values are outside those particular range that's your outliers that you have to take care of another important thing yes uh, multiple clusters you have to see because again you will find no correlation although there might be correlation or association but because of multiple clusters so better is 
do it separately for all the clusters if you can find the clusters. Correlation between just two data points. This is something like you are doing only for two data sets. Means you observe the two, then it don't make any sense. Don't confuse correlation with causation. Never jump to the causation. Causation is something that comes from the logics and lo theoretical logics, theoretical backgrounds, uh, whatever reasons and finding you're finding from the individuals. They are describing that particular thing. It's nothing to relate with the correlation. Correlation will only giving you a hint that is there any kind of association, but you have to take care about the spurious correlation also. Maybe the third factor is there and you are not able to identify that particular variable. That is watch out for lacking variables. So these things you have to take care of while you try to find correlations. So more than the mathematical methods, these uh, particular things that you have to take care of outliers, causation, multiple clusters, plus linearity and all. First, you have to see how you constructed the variables why you constructed the variables what is your research question so what is your theoretical background what are the nature of those particular variables in the theory itself go to the original papers and see is is it possible to get data for those variables in the same format which is described in the theory or you are doing like the in the secondary data if you are taking this is in the nsso data <clears throat> education is not in the something in the area it's in the group right we make education groups level wise so there, uh, that's something really different. You can't find the mean number of year of education. So you have to take care about the nature of data as well. So this is uh, about the correlation, why we find what is correlation, how we find. Tomorrow we will do this exercise with the Stata software and we will apply these formulas with the Stata software. So uh, thank you so much for today's session. It's too long. Any question, any query? Thank you so much for being patient with me. I hope those who are absent start attending the classes. It's not a good idea to get regularly absent from the class. I can understand it's not your uh, formal class, so you have this. But if Nazmam is here, she can tell you that Professor Amitav Kundu, a man in the JNU, they won't even allow us, even if we are one minute late. Means they were. And they were the, the troop actually where we find the discipline in the class and we learned the maximum that's required. OK, so that's it for today. Anything? Yeah, I can't remember this of Professor. I was too afraid from Professor Amitabh I can't even dare to ask question from him means the way he was in the class. OK, so uh, anyone want to anything or then we can just uh, finish today and we will tomorrow we'll do it with the Strata software. So thank you so much.